Hi everybody, it is Julie. Welcome back to Pages and Pens. Today I am here with the intro to my January vlog style wrap up. Today is the 8th of January and I've only finished one book. I'm in the middle of a giant uh, buddy read of Outlander. Up until page 200 I was ready to DNF. I think I might stick with it a little bit further but I'm not sure if I'm actually going to finish that particular book. But I did finish The Heart of Betrayal by Mary E. Pearson which I'm very excited to have finished and I will be starting the third book of that right away. This one took me a really long time to read and I think it's because I started it in December and then I was feeling really slumpy. I just wasn't in the mood and I I was feeling really overwhelmed by trying to finish this trilogy before the year was out. I sat down and I read through the last two-fourths. That's a half. The last half of this book I sat down and read like almost in one day, like almost in one sitting, and it was really, really good. I love Laya. I love um, her as a main character. I think that she is doing a phenomenal job in the situation that she's in. I don't want to go into detail because, again, it's the second middle book of a series, but this is about uh, Jezalia Jezalia. She is a princess. She is set to wed a prince from a neighboring land. She doesn't really want to have a political wedding. She doesn't know this man. She's asked him to kind of meet her prior to the wedding so they can get to know each other. The prince refuses. She goes, forget this guy, and takes off and runs away and goes to work at, in a bar as like a barmaid. And two people go after her. One is the prince that she was set to marry that wants to know more about this woman that ran away. And the other is an assassin who's been sent by a rival clan to go and assassinate the princess. You have an assassin and the prince both coming after her. You don't know who is who in the first book. You do learn that in the first book. And then we continue to the second. And then there's a third. And what I love about this one is that you have a strong female man character who has agency. She's taking control. She is doing what needs to be done to make herself safe and to secure her position in the world. And I like her a whole, whole bunch. So I'm very excited to get to book three. And I think one of the reasons I'm struggling so much with Outlander is because 17-year-old Leah, Leah, whatever, has more agency and courage and just strength of character than like 26 year old Claire from Outlander, but in the same kind of situations, you know, like there's definitely male dominance and there's threats of uh, sexual assault and things like that because of their time period and their kind of situation and their powerlessness, but she's finding ways to kind of fight back everywhere she can. And I love that about her. So super digging that series. That's it so far for my reading for January. Hopefully I'll have more. We'll see what I get to in the rest of this month. Well, you'll see in the next clip, but for now, that's my update. I have a couple other updates for you. Today is the 16th and I officially DNF'd Outlander. I got to page 284, about 45% of the way through this book and decided this was absolutely not the book for me. I am not going to be continuing with this. So uh, these were the, just the tabs for what pages I had to read for a buddy read. Mainly, and a lot of people have asked this, mainly because of a few things. One, I already do not like historical fiction. It's not my thing. But I heard so many great things about this. I knew that there was problematic content in this and I thought that that was mainly because of just this girl going back in time and how she in experiences the men and their behaviors back then. And it is in part, but it's also the main character and how horrific she is and how seeing through her point of view is just really unlikable. Also, the main relationship in this is one that a lot of people kind of stick through the story with because it's redeemable to them. But there was so many flaws in that relationship that to me it wasn't redeemable. There was no part of this character plot and setting anything that I liked. The writing style I really didn't understand either. So while I understand this is an old book and it was her first work, it's not for me. I don't like it. I'm not going to continue. Then I did finish a book. So the second book finished for the year and technically the only one I started and finished in this year. I started The Heart of Betrayal in 2017. So the only book I fully started and finished is Black Lies by Alessandra Torre. Already had the book club show for this. This was a one star read for me which really surprised me because you guys know that I loved her Deanna Madden series. This one was bad. There was not enough sexy time to make it appropriate for the smutty book club. In my opinion, it just was like meh. And while the Deanna Madden series does kind of go over psychosis and uh, 
murderous tendencies and different mental health issues. This one covers and touches on some mental health issues as well, but I did not like the way that it was done at all. In this one particularly, it felt icky just icky. Got random dual perspectives towards the end of the book. I didn't love the way this one was written, didn't like the way that the topic was handled. So for me, not a win. That was a one star book. What I'm going to do, because I don't know how much I'm going to read for the rest of the month, is put in a little bit of footage here of my flip throughs. I'm going to do very quick flip throughs for the traveling books that I have in my possession right now. I have The First Time She Drowned, I have A Great and Terrible Beauty, I have Anna Dressed in Blood, and Rainbow Rowell Attachments. So I'll show you those. I'll talk about the authors. I'll talk about the books. I've only read one of them. So there's that. And then I'll do like a really, really quick flip through so that you guys can see those and kind of get a feel for what those look like. I will see you hopefully when I finish another book, but you're going to hear my voice and see some of the books in front of me in a little bit. So I'll see you guys later. I have all the books, so let's talk about them. Shall we talk about them? I have not read these other three, so I can't speak to what their comments mean or what it looks like. Again, Rainbow Rails Attachments. This is the note that I send out to everybody when it goes out. Here we've got June 2016 is when this went out. And this was a four star rating for this person who wrote in green. Everybody does write in a different color. Riza Raisa read this and she put her favorite quote. She read this from October 20th to November 5th. Amanda read this from November 28th to she didn't put that's fine. And then Kelly also read this from the 25th to the 27th of September. And her favorite quote was love purpose. Those are the things that you can that you can't plan. Those are the things that just happen. This is my first Rainbow Rail bo book. Hope it's not disappointing. Just some little thoughts. These ladies, no joke, wrote in this book almost more than like any other book that I've seen. So I love, love, loved that. But everybody just kind of puts their thoughts and these ladies wrote in it so much. I can't wait to actually reread this and see it. It went crazy on it. Can you see how much they did? It's so good. I like this guy. Oh, they all like him. I mean, he's very nice for a cyber stalker. He is so sweet, like a little kitten, except he's huge. And there's a whole passage here that somebody marked and just said, it's a mom thing. Designated drunk driver, seriously, exclamation point. Means you don't get drunk or you get drunk early so it can wear off so that they can drive, so. Not a fan of that. Can't support that, guys. Don't they have any actual work to do? My sister stole my baby name. I am so sorry. That's brutal. I know baby names are very important to people. I don't get into them because no babies for me. It kind of starts off strong. It usually does for these books. We start getting like really, really strong thoughts in the beginning and then stuff starts to fade away. But that is fine. Purple is holding strong here. Purple's holding strong to the end. Yep, only purple is still writing. She is going for it. Anybody else going to show up? Nope, just purple. Nope, just purple. Oh, man. Okay, so Kelly gave it two stars. Pretty slow to start. Did enjoy going back to this. Rainbow Rail is not for me. I agree with you, Kelly. But this one was probably my favorite. Would have DNF'd if not for the traveling book. Still love the process. Can't wait to see what everybody else thinks. And then down here we have a purple... Uh, four star read. Who was purple? This is a surprise to me. I did not expect to like it so well. I do not like romances at all. All the love and sex is too much for me, but I was, this was delightful and loved her purely from afar. That he loved her purely from afar. Plus I fell in love with Lincoln myself. And then we have over here, one star. I'm sorry. I DNF'd it. It was just such, just too dry. It wasn't for me. So that's why the blue kind of faded off. They did not care for it and they DNF'd it. There's probably a note in there about when they DNF'd and I missed that page. And then Raisa gave it four or three stars. I started out loving this because of the friendship Jennifer and Beth had, their emails. First time she drowned by Carrie Clutter. This one <clears throat> was read by Adrian and Jessica and Christina and Amanda. So Amanda is down here in green and Christina was in light blue. Jessica was in this darker pen and Adrian was in black. Adrian and Amanda stuck with it and I believe read the whole thing but there was DNFs over here with Jessica and Christina. I know a, for a lot of people that do the traveling book this is their first time annotating a book and the first time annotating can be a little bit nerve-wracking. You're afraid of putting something down and I don't, it feels weird writing in a book at first but it is a fun process so 
these girls got right into it. They put some little thoughts in here. We've got uh, Pennsylvania. And then I believe this is Jessica saying that she lived in Pennsylvania in 98. I've lived in Pennsylvania all my life. And then the girls just keep continuing to put their thoughts down. Lots of thoughts down. <laughs> So we can see on this page that we have thoughts up here in the margins. We have underlining in the book. We've got thoughts down here. We have a mirage of thoughts down here on this bottom. Again, I love that they use the open spaces in the book to put down their thoughts because that's what I do when I annotate as well as I use these spaces to really put my my full full thoughts and it, it seems like they all kind of play off of one another so like somebody wrote something somebody else commented on that like there's a lot of call and response as it were for these buddy reads and that's also really really fun especially if you're one of the last people to read and again you're getting more like it seems like they're all kind of chiming in at the same areas in the same spots so whether that's a high emotion spot or just because there's empty space here I don't know because I have not read this yet but I will be reading this so I'm excited to do that this is bumming me out y'all I think the uh, the DNFs are, are coming soon, I believe. WTF are we reading? Did what I think happened really happen? I hope not. I don't know what happens before page 100 there, but something's happening. All right, so right here at 113, we've got, okay, um, I'm going to DNF this book. The heavy subject matter is too much for me right now, and I do like the writing. I just can't deal with the topic, and that was Jessica. And then Christina is mocking her because, not nice Christina, but I believe Christina goes uh, pretty swiftly after this. Um, this is Christina in the light blue and then Adrian up here with the black. So everybody's still in. I'm still seeing like everybody's colors here. Christina has got a giant, giant thing here, which basically is saying like, I am not enjoying this. Adrian is still commenting on this at this point. I see a blue. Okay, Christina's still here. Christina's still here. 194, we've got a DNF from Christina. So this is where she drops off. We'll only have black ink and green ink. Black is Adrian, green is Amanda. Lots of feelings on this page. I love these like end of chapter conversations. Sometimes it's hard, especially with really difficult subject matter books to write a whole ton. But I really do love when people, especially with a traveling book, like really, really mark it up, like go hard on it because it just, it makes it look more worn and more loved. Like, to the point where I'm like, break the spine, like, really go crazy on it. I mean, don't like, I don't want it falling apart when it comes to me, but like, really, really read it. All right, so I think at this point we kind of understand the basic gist of, of everybody's, you know, thoughts and how they annotated it. And then Adrienne here liked the ending. She did say that the end kind of like redeemed it a little bit for her. Christina just again had thoughts on her DNF. Adrian up here gave it 2.75. So she did like 3.75 to a 4 leaning, and Amanda did 2.5 to a 3 leaning, I guess. And that was it for the first time she drowned. I Am the Messenger by Marcus Zuzak, which I'm very excited to read. Have not yet. In this one, we have Kayla, we have Jessica, we have Maria. It's hard for me to keep all the names straight, guys, um, just because I don't remember. I send out a lot of these, like a lot, a lot of these. So it's difficult for me at times to remember who everybody is. Some initial thoughts right off the bat here. I love it. Green is going hard. Here we go, blue. Here we go. People are coming in. I don't know what happened on this page, and I kind of don't want to read it because I don't know. I haven't read it myself, so I don't want to look at it and spoil myself. But uh, you can take a look at this page if you guys have read this. Not too much from pink. Where you go, pink? Blue and green. Blue and green. Here's pink. We got a pink heart. I love this. End of chapter chats, guys. That's where you do it. Love it. Green here had a lot of thoughts. I love that. And I love you taking, like, use of all those pa that open spaces. Here we go, pink. Always have faith. Here we go. Green. Sparkly purple. Sparkly purple and green. Still going strong. Oh, we got a sad broken heart pink. I think this is the most that we've seen from Pink this entire book. Get it, girl? Some more from everybody. Well, not everybody. A couple people. And then down here, we've got a little bit of what looks like final thoughts on that last page that I don't want to look at. I don't want to be spoiled. Um, and that was everything. There was no, like, really large discussion in the back. These, it looks like, are some of their favorite quotes. Just have a little faith. He just smells like he's dead. 
okay. We got a two out of five stars, a three out of five stars. Um, I didn't know words could be so heavy. This is a four out of five stars. Uh, this was, it looks like a one out of five stars. So everything but five there. So we'll have to see when I get to this, I will let you guys know my thoughts, but I have not gotten to that one yet. <clears throat> and then last up for this flip through is Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendare Blake. Very excited about this one because I did do a little bit of a flip through when I got it in the mail and a ton of people commented in this, like lots of writing guys. We have Samantha up here gave it four out of five. Lisa gave it four out of five. Chloe gave it 2.5 out of five and Karina gave it three and a half out of five. I know that Chloe really struggled because she literally read this at, um, I think Christmas time, but I know that like one person read it around Halloween, which would have been perfect. So this was out from like August till December and, uh, reading this in December, as you can tell by the, the cover, probably not the best thing. I have hope that I'm going to love it. I know that it's a scarier book, so I don't know when I'm going to get to it, but as you can see already, all, all of the annotating, all of like the comments and the underlying, and it makes me so insanely happy. This is like my kind of book to get back is when everybody just really goes in on it. Somebody's liking a cat. I want to know who the cat is. This is like also a maroon font. This is not a black font, which I was not aware of. Oh, I sent this out and I hadn't read it yet and I really didn't look at it too, too much, but I didn't realize that this was a colored font. So there's that. We got some LOLs, we got some ha ha ha's, we got a Buffy the Vampire Slayer reference, got a Pizza Hut reference. I love it. There's like LOLs and little hearts. I like this. I like this. We've got like LOLs, smiley faces, ha ha ha's. There's a Harry Potter reference, more like LOLs. So that's just like, I like when books do um, popular references like that, that like everybody who reads it can pretty much get. We've got people that are just bracketing, which is something that I do when I annotate, when I have a large section that I want to point people to, which I love. So that's really helpful when you're reading. Some underlining. We've got some smiley faces and some hearts. We've got lots of hearts around this one. Comments over here. Poor Anna. Somebody's feeling bad for Anna. I hope I do. I don't know. If she's just like a really angry ghost, I'm going to be... This chapter was dot dot dot. Damn great character and all, but I needed a minute to process. Look at all these smiley faces. We have a ton of smiley faces down here, some LOLs. The house literally lurches. It's a monster house. We've got more pizza references over here. There's a ton, I don't know what happens on this page, but people have feelings about it. I don't want to look because I don't want to spoil myself, but people have feelings about that particular page. It might not have been able everybody's cup of tea, but apparently... There's still some LOLs, LOLs, there's hearts. So people are still loving it. Now it's creepy. So there's creepies, there's LOLs, there's oh no's, more creepies. Apparently it's getting scary here, guys. I don't deal well with strange, with uh, scaries, but we'll see. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to read this. Legitimately, just like hearts, LOLs, ha ha's, ha ha's. A sad face with a dam, so who knows what's happening, really. That was everything. I'm very excited to read these once I've read the book, and I won't be spoiling myself. So Lisa was the orange. Lisa had a lot of thoughts. So, I mean, everybody did. I think everybody read and wrote a whole, whole bunch. So I underlined and hearted quotes that I liked. Oh, that's good to know, so I can go back and look at it. This was her first ghost book. But that was this flip loop, so I, I will see you guys in my next clip when I have a book that I finished that I can show you. But uh, this is probably how I'm going to do flip throughs from now on. One book at a time. I won't have this many all at once to have to do. And I finished The Darkest Part of the Forest by Holly Black. I know what is coming in my owl crate and my fairy loot this month. And I know that it's fae based. And I figured I just kind of wanted to like get back into that world and into that mindset which is nerve wracking for me because it's also what I'm writing. So I'm trying to like not have cross contamination. This is very different than what I'm writing. So that's fine. This was a four star read for me. I enjoyed it. It was quick. It was fast. It was darker, like way darker than I thought it was going to be. And I'm not sure what I was expecting. I, yeah, I don't think I had any expectations for it, but it wasn't what I was expecting at the same time, if that makes any sense at all. Unique take on Faye, which I liked but it's basically about these siblings, Hazel and Ben, and they live in Fairfold. And there's a ton of references to Philadelphia, so I don't exactly know where Fairfold is, but it's a town that is surrounded by woods that Fay definitely live in. And this town is aware of the Fay. There's all these superstitions and like staying out of the woods when the Fay are out. 
and ways to stay safe from the Fae. If you're native to this town, then the Fae don't bother you, but if you're a tourist or if you're there visiting, the Fae will most likely kill you. It's interesting. It was good, but it wasn't, it wasn't everything, but I did enjoy it. So four stars. Hi guys. So I'm about to sit down and do my makeup so I can film, and I figured I would just do the vlog portion of this before that, but I did finish a book. I finished the Tribulations of August Barton by Jennifer LeBlanc. She sent this to me um, unsolicited in the mail, and I'm really, really glad she did. I ended up really loving it. It was 159 pages about a kid in his first year of college dealing with anxiety and family stuff, and his grandmother is a retired prostitute. Hilarious. Like, absolutely hilarious. Grandma Gertie is the bomb. And I actually ended up really, really enjoying it. Um, so yeah, I, I was surprised. I don't know why I was so surprised, but I was. I ended up loving it. I gave it five stars and like a glowing review on Goodreads and Amazon because leaving reviews for your indie authors is vitally important. Oh, I don't have a lipstick on. Hi guys, I'm here with the end of my January wrap up. The Heart of a Trail, I finished that. I'd already started it, finished that. The Darkest Part of the Forest, um, I gave both of those four stars. Then I read Black Lies by Alison Notori, gave that one star. I read Outlander by Diana Gabaldon, DNF'd it one star. I read The Tribulations of August Barton, that was a novella, gave that five stars. And I also read The Cruel Prince by Holly Black, and I gave this five stars. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six six things read, two of which were like half read because I finished The Heart of Betrayal and I only got halfway through, a little bit less than halfway through Outlander. I'm happy with that. I'm okay with that. And my stats for the month, I think I annotated three, didn't annotate three. Um, I did not annotate Black Lies. I did not annotate The Heart of Betrayal and I did not annotate the novella, but I did annotate The Darkest Part of the Forest and Cruel Prince by Holly Black as well as Outlander before I DNF'd it. This book, I only have a couple tabs because it was for like big political plot points or like things that I really wanted to be able to like access in case I needed to remember it later in the book. But I wrote on like every page of this book. Oh my goodness, guys, I loved it. This was kind of what I wanted the darkest part of the forest to be and the darkest part of the forest wasn't quite this. This was everything I want in a fae based book. It was dark, it was cruel, it was real, it was raw, it was bloody and murderous and there was court intrigue and court scheming and political scheming. And then there's this beautiful, amazing, complex character in Jude who is our main character and she is a human in the fae world doing whatever she can to exist and thrive there even though she is not immortal and she's weak and she's so badass and you have family struggles and family dynamic and it is so good. I did see certain character and plot twists coming, but other ones I didn't, so all in all I loved it. I took my time with this. I think it took me five days to read this. A big part of what is slowing me down is annotating, which is what I really want to be doing, so I'm fine with that. Really, I'm happy that I read two of Holly Black's Fae-based books in this month. I'm glad that I read The Darkest Part of the Forest first. There is like a cameo of those characters in this book. I don't think I would have necessarily missed out on too much not having read it first. And today is the 27th of the month. So I do have a couple days left and the only other book that I really wanna to get to, The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson, which is the third of the Remnant Chronicles. Like I said, I finished The Heart of Betrayal and I'd like to start this. I may start this, I know I'm not gonna finish it, and then February is an all contemporary month for me, so I won't finish this in February. So I'm gonna start this now, finish it probably in March. So I'm comfortable calling it. I'm very excited about the next book. I'm super stoked to continue with this series. Really happy to have this exclusive cover, which like more and more I am appreciating, especially after reading the story. I definitely can appreciate this cover. Super, super happy I read that. Not bad for January. Again, really holding true to my read less and read better. And even though I had some DNFs and some not favorite books, I'm okay with that. So I will catch up with you guys in February's TBRs, which will have a regular month long TBR, my uh, contemporary thon TBR, and then my wrap up. I will probably have have a vlog at the end of Contemporary Thon where I will cover all of the books that I read during Contemporary Thon and then another vlog with the wrap up of all the books that I read outside of that. So I'll have two different wrap ups and two different TBRs for next month. But that is it. If you liked this video, be sure to give me a big thumbs up, click subscribe, and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.